All right, let's go to Paul with the great car ideas. Always has some good questions for us. Uh, let's say Mitchkov hits his absolute ceiling. What's the comparison, pure talent-wise, between him and the next best player, Travis Konechny, and then maybe G and Jake? Uh, and how good is our current supporting cast in comparison to those teams? He believes 13-14 was their best team. And, man, it might be true. Uh, <laughs> and it's like the number one defensive one on those teams was Andrew McDonald. <laughs> like He played, Tiemann was still there, Coburn was still there. Who led them in ice minutes? Uh, who led them in ice time against the Rangers? It was it was Andrew McDonald. Uh, anyway, so let's start at the top here. What's the talent comparison between TK, G, Jake, and Mitch Kyle? So the idea, I, if I'm interpreting this, this question correctly, basically what Paul with the great car ideas is asking for is. Mitch Koff, at if he hits a ceiling, is he better than Giroux? NTK, it, or is that duo better than G and Jake? So what I will say is that I think Jake at his prime was better than TK in his prime. So Jake is better than TK. I I, I am confident of that. Better overall player. So for hmm. the Mitch Koff TK duo to be better than G and Jake, Mitch Koff would have to be better than Jake. Now, is that possible? Sure. I mean, I think Mitch Koff's ceiling is a no doubt about a Hall of Famer in the Nikita Kucherov realm. That would be better than Claude Giroux, who, as much as I respect the hell out of his talent, like he is probably in that borderline Hall of Famer realm. I think he should make it, but it's not a slam dunk the way that I suspect Kucherov will be when his career is done. So do I think that Mitch Koff's ceiling is high is is higher enough than Giroux's prime to account for the fact that Jake is better than TK is honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think Mitch Koff could his, his absolute best case scenario ceiling again, best case scenario. Drew didn't even hit his best case scenario ceiling. Like truthfully, Drew was great, but like you could watch Drew and be like, yeah, you know, he had the talent to be a 100 point a year guy every year. So, yeah. so, uh, so like, do not take this as me saying that I think Mitch Koff is destined to hit his ceiling. Like, his ceiling is real friggin' high. That's why he's so exciting. But yeah, if Mitch Koff hits his ceiling, I think he could be better better enough than Giroux to make up for the fact that I think Jake is better than TK. I'm trying to come up with a scenario in which TK and Jake are maybe equals or connect these better. I'm just like, you know, the penalty kill stuff. and But like... The penalty kill, yeah. TK pro provides just, value on the penalty kill. Jake never did. They're just so... They're really hard to compare. Jake was just a much, to me, number one, Jake was a much better five on five player. Jake was at his peak for like five or six years, a legitimate play driver in a way that, that, that TK is not. Now, I do not think that Jake ever gave a shit about defense. It was just, he was so good offensively That's that it was play driving by possession. If TK is not as good at possession, so there's more opportunities for him to screw up defensively because you just don't have to puck as much. He's more of a rush-based transition attacker. That's I, you went with the five-on-five five and the entries, and like that's the possession was very much a big part of Jake's game. Where I wanted to go with it is if TK could do on the power play what Jake did, I think I would take TK. Yeah, but they are. So far apart Jake in that is regard. Jake so, was so much better on the power so play. So far apart in that so regard. Better, yeah. And listen, he did have Giroud to play off it of. Helps. And, but like, those two were so good together. Yeah. And TK, man, maybe with Mitchkov he can do that. But to this point, he has shown us nothing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> along those lines. I, I think the implication of, of Paul's question is... You actually it, interpreted it, it better it is, than I did, It is I essentially think. that, like... Because the, the underlying implication here is TK at least this is the way I'm reading it, is that TK doesn't strike him as the ideal number two. And if G and Jake couldn't get it done and TK is worse than Jake, then how good does Mitch Koff have to be for this duo to be better than the duo that we didn't win anything with? And my answer is, I think Mitch Koff's absolute ceiling is high enough to make up for that. Now, that would be the pie-in-the-sky best-case scenario, but that's how high I think of Mitch Koff's ceiling. And this is coming from someone who thinks Claude Giroux should be in the Hall of Fame. I think Mitch Koff could be could be not significantly, but measurably better than a guy who I view to be a sh should be a lock for the Hall of Fame. That's how highly I view Mitch Koff's ceiling. Again, doesn't mean he's going to get there, but the reason why we're all so excited about him is because Mitch Koff's ceiling is that high. Also, 
the hope is you build a better supporting cast than the one Jake and G had, which was, yeah, that when Sean nice. Couturier was Sean Couturier at his peak, yes, but that, like, maybe the 16 playoffs, but he got hurt there. And then after that, and that's really when Drew started to break down until they moved him to wing to play with Coots, and then that's a totally different team. But, like, I, those supporting gas were garbage. Like I just said, 13-14, Andrew McDonald led the team in ice time against the Rangers. That's a bad team. I would agree. <laughs> like, so just I, mean, I, I think you can make a, I think you can make a strong case truthfully. And obviously it was a different kind of team because you could argue that they weren't the guys anymore. I think the best team that they were ever on was 2019, 2020. Probably. I think that was the best team. Um, they, they were maybe not the best players anymore, but I think that yeah. was the best team that both Giroux and Jake were on. That's probably true. Um, like 16 because a ghost and like you had Couturier coming into his own you had Shen still, maybe Simmons still, but yeah, I it's think you, probably 19. You could make a case for 17, 18 just because all of the top end guys were at their best. Okay. Like you had Drew scored over and that's 100. With Ghost. Jake was point per game. Ghost and Provy were Ghost together. Ghost and together. Yeah. yeah. TK had a, had a really strong second half. You still had Simmons. Like, and he was not what he used to be, but he was still Wayne Simmons. You had Couturier, had, had took the big leap. And then he was a Selkie contender. That might have been, you could make a case, but that supporting cast was so bad. Yeah. That team was like one of the most top heavy teams I've ever watched in my life. The top five or six guys were great. Everyone else fucking stunk. <laughs> <laughs> we all silly like the mayor. 